hello to all of my BP TV fans, YouTube fans, Facebook fans, Maria's Arts fans. I'm Alan Levine, The Talking Machine Show. I'm ready to do another, our third show of Maria's Arts Teaches Us to Paint. <laughs> today. Hi Alan, I'm great. Uh, welcome back to the show. If you've seen it before, Maria's Ideas teaches us to paint. I'm Maria DeSimone Prasic and I'm excited that we have our guest here, a friend from neighboring um, business district here, Mayor Joanna Taylor. Thank you so much for having ha uh, joining us today. So yeah, thank we're happy you for having, having me. Yeah, we're excited. Welcome aboard. Yes. Thank you. Can so, you paint? We'll see. Oh, it's an adventure. <laughs> She will today. There you go. So, all right, let's get started. And we're going to paint this fun flowers today. All right. Now, this is just a suggestion. You can go with the flow and do your own thing, but I will help you and guide you with, with each step. But that's our, that's our inspiration here. I'm going to put that right there. All right. So first we have our design. If you get the kits from us that comes in the kits. And I also have a video on Maria's Ideas Art, my YouTube channel which um, it's a little 10 minute video that shows how to draw each design for each episode so that you can provide your own materials and paints and things like that. So what we're going to do is put the paper in place on top of the canvas and just hold it in, in place. If you're right handed, hold it with your left hand and you'll move the transfer paper. You put the transfer paper underneath, like remember carbon paper back oh, in the yeah. day? Can I call Some people carbon do, paper? I know, young people don't know what carbon paper is. And just I know move what it is. that. I'm not that young. Yeah. yeah. And just move the paper <laughs> where you need it as you're drawing. Oh, but just try not to, you know, just you can do this and move that, but try to keep the, the design oh. in place. Otherwise, you're going to have to, you know, figure Maria, out where it was. My, my so just, tip to anybody watching. Since I'm a simple man, I just put it down and it's about halfway there. Yeah, but so you have then, to be able to move the transfer paper out from under it without moving the well, paper. Watch what I'll do. I see. Okay, that's good. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks, so just teacher. Trace. I appreciate you letting me do that. I'm so, going to go in and start. Yes, I got we're it going to draw. In, so we'll see what happens. And you don't have to draw the little pickle on the design, just the flowers. <laughs> and we're going to do Thank some of the other things. Thank you for clarifying that, yes. teacher. And so just draw it. It, it doesn't have to be exactly the same this is just to give you an idea so you don't have to make the wiggly lines you know exactly the way they there. are should i put the dot no i'm not sure what that was and well, this you know is... i got questions so thank you yes questions for mayor joanna <laughs> she's doing good things in the area we're so happy to have her here thank young, you young Trying. fresh ideas we have new businesses and so much more of a positive vibe and energy. I've been here 41 years in this neighborhood in business, and I've seen it and since you've been here, and it's fabulous. Well, thank you. We're so happy. Well, Mayor, to have I got to ask you a question. Okay. When did you become mayor, and why did you want to be mayor? These are great questions. Mm -hmm. Well, the first one's easier. I became mayor last January. You notice so I started out easy. That was easy. I do appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> so, last, it's been one year since uh congratulations you. yes she's done a lot in thank a year you. already yes um well we have honestly some very good leadership in the borough and yes. i always he knows i always got to give a shout out to our borough manager rick he's oh, so he's fa great. fabulous yes he and is. really i feel like a lot of what i do is just supporting things that he already has you know has put in motion and mm -hmm. things that are going on and that's really yeah. what he needed is just like some support he's been working with a lot of groups we have a lot of community partners and already had a lot of things mm -hmm. going and, and we things just take needed, time exactly. and you don't even though you guys are doing wonderful things you don't you might not see, see it, it but it's happening and it's and he, good he and needs to have that support yes. to make it happen and that's so a lot a of what i try to do then. yeah yeah that's a good way to say it. and you know learning how to do things so part of the why did i do it yes. part is um you know just i lived here up in the well, hilltop that's one for of the quiet, main things that for I quite got a while to yeah previously and we love it we are here by choice we um my husband and i moved here uh it's, it's been almost 10 years up in the hilltop congratulations thank you yeah um and there's a lot of things that we really love about it and there's some things that we thought 
they just need a little more support. Mm -hmm. and, and there are so yeah. many good people here, uh, still here. A lot of younger people have been moving in. They're, no, they, I've seen they, that. They, yeah. they're, it's a lot less expensive. You can buy a house for the same yeah. amount or less than rent on the south side, and you have a yard and a garage. Yeah. And it's, it's wonderful. We used to be the young people on our street. We renovated an old Victorian, and now we're the old people on the street, you know. Oh. But, um, yeah, well, you kind know what of. Happens. But it's great. I love the mix, the diversity of people. It's yeah. it's really, I love it. I've We've chosen to stay here. I've been here, like I said, in business 41 years in the same place and um, chose to live in the area, and, in, and it's, it's great. So to see the business district come alive again, it's exciting. I do see the renaissance happening oh, yeah. with new places opening, Mayor, so I wish you well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And thank, thank you for you. answering my two questions with a short little answer. I respect that. And I'm still trying to trace. Yeah. I know. Look at that. I, know. I think you did yours already, right? I Were did. I'm trace. Okay, here, I'll take those out of your way. Right, we're done with these. The uh, stems and the berries, we're doing those all freehand. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, I didn't realize there's berries. I better yes. look at this. I know. So this is just, and you could see already what we have going on here. And as we paint these, as you can see from the design, all of your colors don't have to be in the same exact places. I'm going to suggest where we're putting them, but you're going to just have your own style and your own vibe the way you paint, and, and you should. They should all look different. And this design is going to be more expressionistic, I guess you could say, and a little looser. We're not trying to make this look like a photographic, you know, image of a rose, or these could be peonies or roses. How's mine or, look to start? That looks good. Very good. Okay. Sounds good. All right. A little better. Yes. A little nervous. So we're going to start with the backgrounds that we're using acrylics. And whenever you, you you paint with acrylics, typically you paint the background first, and then you layer, and anything that's in the foreground is on top. Um, ideally, if we had say four hours to do this class, I would have possibly painted the whole background one color, then draw the design on that. You could do it that way too. But this works well because we want these reds and pinks to be bright. And if we had that blue underneath, that would tone them a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we'll get the truer bright red with the white canvas. So we're just going to block in and paint around them. So we're going to start with our one inch uh, flat brush shader. Yes. And I usually dip this in the water first, just to, and then take the excess water off. Just dry that on your paper towel. And then I usually shape the bristles. What that does is it allows the paint to absorb better in the bristles and always keep the bristles in the direction that they were created on the brush. So we're going you to- You heard that, Mayor. Yes. So, <laughs> I'm listening very carefully. I mean, I'm just going to say, I do recall one time seeing you doing that to mix your paint. Yeah, and I did. Like, wow. No, look at that did. I did, not thank you for not you have correcting to. me. Yeah, I know. So but we'll, now we'll just remind you later. You, you know. don't want to smush up your bristles. You want to be kind to your brush. No smush Okay, today. no smushing. So what we're going to do, and I fix my bristles. Okay, I'm we're going again. into See, this really can... pretty aqua color, and we're going to put some on our, you know, grab some of that and put some of this. Now, uh, what I do is I always mix on my palette, if I'm using a couple colors, put them next to each other and introduce them to each other as you need them. So when I'm loading the brush, you could see how I'm flipping the brush back and forth and what that does, it loads the brush, but it does not mess up the bristles, okay? Oh yeah, And does. you wanna to try to keep the paint from going up in the ferrule of the brush, which I am really bad at that. Mine is always, you know, and then it, your brushes get all messed up, but you know, if you can avoid it, that will keep your brushes nicer longer. Teacher, I will try. Yes. So we're cutting in. We're going. I'm going to start at the top and just kind of work my way down. And you can lay the brush down flat and and rest it on the canvas watch. and just pull it around good. like this. Or yeah. you can just use the corner. But what I do is if you if you lay the brush down on the canvas, let it rest on the canvas right here. You can see it's resting. That controls your hand a little, and then you just pull your hand around. So it keeps a nice, gives you a nice clean edge. And then just move the paint around. If it tends to get a little, uh, you see a lot of the texture of the canvas, you need either a little bit more paint. You might want to a add a little bit of much, water. So I should just smooth it out then? Um, you can, you know, if you leave it, the texture will dry like that. And that's actually very nice. I hope oh, when, okay. when we paint the flowers, I suggest leaving the paint a little thicker. Uh, this is like a medium body, 
paint, you can, if you use a really heavy body paint, that will uh, definitely leave the nice texture, which is great, especially for this subject matter. Yeah. Maria, um, by the way, how did you come up with this, this theme? Um, I figured March is a good time for flowers to start popping up, and I'm usually inspired by the time of year and maybe what's going on, and I'm ready to see some flowers and some color. It's been a little dreary here lately yeah. in the berg. Well, but, Maria, um, except for those three 70 degree days we've had in yeah. February. I'll take that. Well, the other yeah. day, last week, uh, right out my front door, I'm getting mail and I didn't plant these flowers in my yard. White snowdrops. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They just come up after I've been there 16 years and didn't plant them. Nice. Maybe the birds planted them for you. Well, <laughs> yeah. they're consistent. Yeah. My birds were singing this morning. Oh, now the other thing I'm doing, and you on the inspiration picture, you can see some white in the background. You can mix right on the canvas too. So if, if I grab some of my white and I kind of throw it on the canvas, just to give it some interest, you can see I'm just I'm not blending it completely. That just gives the background just a little interest there. And you can certainly use a smaller brush for these other areas. But if you if you pick up the brush vertically and use the edge, it gives you that lot fine line that you need thank you to for just teaching move around me. i'm doing that look at yeah. i'm flipping this yes time. flip it back and forth it, it you loads can the learn brush. it too we're trying to teach That's you right. yes and then just we're just going to fill this in all the way around and if you i would recommend covering up these lines a little if you do watch the video and you use a pencil same thing try to cover the pencil lines um Great tip, thank you. Yeah, and you can still see through the paint somewhat anyway, depending on the color. And I just grabbed a little more white and I'm mixing that in again. Just again, just to break up the background. We want to see some, some maybe some brush strokes and more of a painterly look instead of it doesn't have to be a solid, smooth color. And you I don't can, see any sun on this, so I'm not sure. No, we don't have, we don't necessarily have our light source Okay, no. I just we, wanted we to kind ask because well, you we, taught me that. We do. If you look at the vase, one side is lighter, so I guess we do. But we're not, um, this is not, you know, fancy still life or anything. We're just painting more of a stylized version. Well, you taught me, so i got to bring it up. Thank you yeah. for the answer. That's right. So it's there, I have student. my background Thank filled you. in, and you can see my white. Yeah. You're much faster. Yeah, I am. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. I'm really concentrating here. Yours is very perfect. It's very nice. I'm a, I know. When you're like, you can do kind of whatever you want. I'm yeah. like, oh, no, I'll do exactly yeah, very as you tell yes. me to do. As and don't be afraid to mix in some white. You see <laughs> how it is. I'm the slowest in the bunch, so I don't know what you're talking about. That's okay. <laughs> and you can see the... I'm getting there. How the white just adds a little interest. And if you're working wet on wet, like I am here... It's blending, one color is blending into the other, and then I'm getting a few other shades of this aqua color, which is really pretty, I think. I just think it's a good time of year. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. It is a great color. Mm -hmm. And then whenever you're done with your brush, either rinse it really well and set it aside or leave it in the water. The acrylics dry really quickly and um, once they dry, you can get it back out with like a rubbing alcohol or a hand sanitizer mm. will reactivate the paint and take it back out if it dries. And maybe it gets kind of gummy and messy, but I'm going to just make sure I rinse my brush really well. Okay, so the next brush I'm picking up is my half inch flat shader. And I'm coming in and I'm painting the, I'm going to do the vase and then I'm going to work on the large bright red areas. All right, so first I decided my vase is going to be like a, a pale pink with some shading on it. And we'll mix this color. Um, I'll ask Alan and jo Mayor Joanna how they think we're going to get this, achieve this color. We'll get to that in a little bit. Whoa. Wow. Great. So Can't I'm, wait. Yes. Yeah. So I'm starting with some white on my palette, and I'm going to introduce a little bit of red to make a pink color. Oh, we're going back to the red and white. Last yeah. time you had pink made for me, I so did. I appreciate it. It's so simple. <laughs> I did. <laughs> yes, and I'm just coming in. Again, I'm holding my brush vertically. I'm letting those bristles spread out, and I'm pressing down. You can see I'm pushing it all the way down on the canvas and just let those, the bristles right here, on the put those on that line and just pull one brush stroke just like that. Mm. It gives you a nice wow. 
fine, that's beautiful. straight that's line. That's the advanced lesson right there. Yeah. And that's just having control of the brush. If you try to keep your hand steady, sometimes it's a little tricky, but if you let the brush rest on the canvas, it supports your hand, it keeps a little steady. I'm trying that right now. It yeah. Does. I'm able to keep it straight and round here. Good. Yeah. So I have. Thank I, you. Yeah. I, so I painted that vase pink, but I put some white on the right side. And I'm going to hit a little yellow on that later when I have yellow on my brush. But I do want to shade this a little bit now. I will come back whenever I do these dark, dark areas here. Um, but so I want. It's like a burgundy or a maroon color. Ooh. So with the colors that we have, what two colors do you think will make that shade? So it's not the bright red, but it's a version of, it's a red tone. Any ideas to make some, this burgundy color? It needs at least some of the dark blue in it, right? I was gonna say blue. blue. will work. Oh, okay, no then. Um, well, oh. I could tell when I said that, huh? Usually, you start, if you start with the opposite color on the color wheel, that will knock a color back from its intensity and without making it muddy and dirty if you add. Hmm. Uh, a lot of people think you add black. If you add the black, you oh, can, really? but it would look a little dirty. Okay. But I'm, you'll see here, I'm going to take my red. I had a little bit of white on there. And I'm going to add green, which is the opposite color oh, really? of the color wheel because I gotta learn that color wheel. What it's yes. <laughs> yeah. What it's going to do, see that right there? Just that little bit of green. Oh. It makes it a pretty wow. like a burgundy okay. color. I wouldn't have thought that. Blue would also work. I'm with it would there. be a no little clue. the blue would lean a little more toward purple. Okay. Because red and blue make yeah. purple. But this gives us that very pretty like a wine color mm -hmm. or a maroon color. And I want that for this shade, oops, right here. I'm going to put this on the left side of the vase. Just one little brush stroke, maybe a little under this leaf. And I'm just going to pull the brush strokes down like that. And so, yeah, so to get back to our light source, we could say our light source is on the right side. You know I had to ask. Yes. You've taught <laughs> You are a good student. I do remember. You do retain. Now I have some yes. catching up to do. No, you're good. There I I'm got just it. painting. I beat the mayor. <laughs> no, with the white though. Look at me. Yeah, you got to add some advanced. interest, but not that we're competing. Though. Exactly. No, yeah, not at all. Not that we're competing. No, I take that. Not really. We sort of are, but we got a little girl power <laughs> going so here today. But you know. Yeah. I don't yeah. want to lie about just competing with myself, so See? yes, we are, a little bit. All right, a little bit, just <laughs> I, a little bit. I like it. So you'll do your vase, the white, the white and the pink, and then, see, once this, once, when it's wet, it keeps grabbing the other color. So I'm going to let that dry oh. a little bit, and then okay. I'll come back in and hit that again with, once it dries, you can always add your highlights on top. The highlights are the fun part. But you can see this kind of gives you the suggestion of the light source being on the left side. So the so white, red and white to make the pink, paint your vase, and then red with a little not a, not like half green, half red. I'd say a, a just a touch. A third green, little bit okay. to achieve that pretty wine color. And I spilled there's a little drop of red on my background, but we'll take care of that later. Okay. So I'm going in, I'm going in straight red with my half inch shader. And I'm, now what I'm doing here is I'm coming in again, I'm laying my brush down and I'm going to pull it around. I'm not worried about making these shapes um, too rounds, kind of give it some angles here. And that sort of suggests, you know, the way the petals lay on a flower, it just makes it more interesting. So I'm leaving some lumpy areas. I'm coming in and the, the spaces that we did draw here, again, we don't have to stay true to those exactly. That is just going to help you figure out where we're going to lay in some of those other colors. But you can see I, I covered that with the red. While this is still wet, I'm going to grab a little bit of orange and just lay it on top of the Ooh, red just yeah. here and there I love that. and just it the light colors come forward dark colors recede so the orange is brighter than the red so the orange is going to make that area of that petal just pop a little bit okay so I'm going to do the same thing 
with the other two. I'm gonna let this dry just for a little bit. It dries really quickly, which is another reason why when you paint with acrylics, if you're blending, you kind of need to keep it moving because it, if you're trying to blend because they do dry really quick. And um, so that could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what you're trying to do. Yes. So you can see, <laughs> yeah. So I I'm agree. just kind of coming in. You can see I'm leaving, blocking it, but I'm leaving those big areas. So I'm just gonna work on these two right now. And this one, I'm just going to put a touch of orange, not too much on this one. So I'm going to, I'm not rinsing the brush, but I'm just taking the extra paint off on my paper towel. So I still have that red on there. And I'm going to mix a pink because I want this section here of the flower to look like it's up higher. So I need it to be lighter. So I take the white and there was already red on my brush, so I made some pink, but I feel like I want that a little bit brighter. So I add some white and I'm coming in and just hit, hitting those areas. So you could see that looks like oh. it comes forward a little bit. Yeah. And you can see I'm, I'm blending it in with the other red because it's, it's wet on wet. So I'm not mixing it and, and making a solid color. I'm leaving these brush strokes oh. and give it some interest. You can see here, I'm not blending it. I'm yeah. just laying that on top. So they're mixing here and there where they transition from one color to the next, but I'm just leaving those brush strokes. And I'm going to do the same thing with my, this one. Now this particular red and white is making a particular pink color. If you want this to be more of like a bubblegum pink or a brighter pink, hot pink color, you can certainly buy a pink paint already mixed and oh, that okay. will give you a brighter uh, mm. pink too. But we're gonna just work with what we have here. I think on my design it looks more of a magenta pink, which I could probably do that. Um, it would be easier if we had the regular or the pink already mixed, but that's okay. We're we, having fun. Yeah, we're we like it like that. So you can see just these brush strokes, like as you're adding this because it's wet on wet, I have three or four different shades of pink in there too. And again, that's giving these flowers some interest there. The lines are just suggestions. So you don't have to make sure everything is right exactly where the lines are. So I'm coming in, doing the same thing with the red here. All right, and I, I didn't even rinse my brush, so I have pink in there, I have red in there. These are just very fun flowers, simple. Letting the colors just kind of mix right on the canvas. But I would say try to keep those brush strokes with some angles in them, and that's what gives it that sort of that layered petal um, look. And then as you're, you're doing well, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. They look good. And then I would say make the, the brush strokes, the, the shape of the flowers, the, the way the, the petals may be laying, paint the brush strokes in that direction. So if the petal is going left to right, that brush stroke it will help suggest that that's the petal shape. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Thank so you. yeah, yeah. So you can sense. see here if I come this way, that's the petal. So just paint the direction okay. of the, the petals. Once I get my, I say I'm a little bit of an outliner, but yeah. once I outline it, yeah. I come back and pet yeah. myself. And then and you can add some orange just or white. you're or, teaching your kids. That's right. There you go. Go in strong. That's right. <laughs> and then I'm going to grab, again, I'm going to mix a pink. Or, and the acrylics dry darker. So as you're mixing on your palette, Keep in mind, it's going to be a little darker than what you're seeing there. I also work with watercolors, and that's the opposite. They dry lighter, so oh. I have oh, to... okay, so you need that good uh, eye like you have. You, well, you, you get used to it. It's like anything, the more you do practice, you get your, your, your trained eye, you know. Well, this is only my third experience painting and They're doing a good years. job, just good job. So start with the true red, and then come in with the pink, so true the the real bright red. Oh, okay. Yes, and then the the pink is some layers on I top that come that. forward. Thank yes. You. Thanks for your guidance. Yes, and then I I was throwing so it. I'm, yeah, that's okay. I'm all over the place. So. Yes, yeah, start with the red. When you you want to start with the darker color, the bolder colors, and then build up those the dimension with the lighter shade. So if you start with the lighter one, 
it's harder to do that. You have to go back in and add the dark and, and they You're explaining me for all you amateurs out yes. there. Yes. And when I'm you going when, back in. Right. With the with watercolors <laughs> you have to leave your On white areas. Right. But you have to kind of think ahead a little and know where your light colors are going to be. But with acrylics, it's so easy to add them. You add them. You build those layers up. Um, and I'm living proof of that right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. So I have the red. The I started with the red, came in with some pink, some orange. And again, I've just kind of laid them in just where I feel like I needed those sections to break up a little bit. That looks beautiful. Thank you. And, um, and now, but I'm going to let this dry. Uh, yeah, I'm going to let that dry and work on the other ones because if I put too much of the white right now it's just going to blend in too much and I don't want it to blend in mm. it as much so the, the the smaller flowers this one this one this one and this one is a little medium size they're more the orange and orange or they could be maybe a poppy I have poppies the oriental poppies that grow in my garden oh that's and um, nice. they're very pretty oh, orange yeah so I'm doing the same thing here but I'm starting with the bright orange then I'll introduce a little touch of let me go this way. A little touch of yellow and red. Let me see here. But you can see I'm purposely covering up that background color a little bit. But just keep those brush strokes in the direction of the petals. And then I'll come in with some yellow because the yellow is brighter. And that makes that pop a little bit. So very sug just suggestions of petals. Again, it's just just laying them in where you kind of need a little pop of color. Let's see here, I think I'm going to put a little bit of pink. Now this has, I have yellow on my brush, so it's going to be more of a salmon color. Red and white, put that here, okay. I need to cover up my lines a little more. <laughs> Yours are covered more. Mine are... They, they will. That's where when you add some more white to the pink, the white's more opaque too. It will cover. That looks good though. But I'd say make it a little bit lighter now so that okay. you bring... Pops more. Yes. The lighter it is, that the more it's going to come forward for you. And this one, I think I'm just going to add more yellow. So we're just doing... You could see they're just very quick brush strokes. We're just layering layering the colors and just I'm kind of going around in circles with the brush strokes but angle angling them so that no this is a great of, theme yeah definitely yeah so always start with the darker colors Alan I know I went the opposite because yeah. I had pink that's okay <laughs> I'm going dark now in the end it will still be I'll go back nice. red I promise you yeah okay so you too can make mistakes like I do. Yeah, there are no mistakes in art. All right. Well, no misdirection. Way I look at it, that looks good. See now you have some. You sometimes you don't know that you have a style or a certain way that you paint until you do it. That's not a You I have can see. a it's... lot of very curvy shapes, which are beautiful. Like I love it. They're it's they're different though. Yeah, now and I'm, you don't I'm know. Second and... guessing my difference. No, no, <laughs> no, that's beautiful. But you could see you're just going with it, and that's what your hand and your eyes want to do, and that's why. You have a style that okay. you didn't even know you I had. Didn't even know. Wow. They're beautiful. I have a style. They're they're very nice. And um, okay, so let's see. Let's. I'm sticking with still the same brush. I'm going back in to make that the wine burgundy maroon color. And what did we say we used to make that? Oh, the dark green with the red. Mm-hmm. So we yeah. always. So we always, we're, it is, a, it is a, a red tone. So we're starting, you always start with that color, that color family, start with that color. Introduce the green, and I'm not even cleaning off my brush, but taking the excess off. And what I'll do is You're when I- You're giving me confidence, I don't have to keep dipping. No, when I go into my colors in my palette, if I go in in the edge, it doesn't contaminate the, the, the color pot completely. I just usually go in mm. on the edges. And so I'm going to add a little bit of green. And like you said too, you could add a little bit of blue. It would it would lend it would kind of lean a little more toward a, a purple, okay. which is beautiful too for this. Um, and what we want to do is achieve a very nice uh, dark wine color. I think I feel like mine is a little bit darker. 
So I just added a little bit more green. And then I'm coming in, in this section, in the center, we want to give that some depth that gets that hole in the center. How do you do that? With the darker colors, because the dark colors recede and the uh, light colors come forward, which is why you need the lighter colors to bring those areas oh, now forward. Now I understand, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Too much. Okay. I know we're tight spaces here. <laughs> no, you're Not good. over here. I got if, plenty if you don't of know each ladies. other before the class, you know we, each other we know now. after the class. That's right. That's right. <laughs> we can't miss now. No. All right. So I filled those in with that. I think I'm going to grab a smaller brush now. That, whoops, I need a little bit more. So if you want a little darker, just add a little bit more of the green. And we may have to come in and hit this again. Again, because this is kind of wet on wet. And as it dries, if it's still wet and you, you keep going over it, it will pick up the paint that's already mm -hmm. there. If you want it to add a layer, you need to let it dry a little bit. So I'm going to put that brush in the water. And I'm going to grab a little round... Um, like a little round liner brush. And I'm going to make the same mixture, the red, and introduce a little green. I'm going to put a little bit of that blue in like you suggested. Okay. Okay. I want to like. see that, yeah. Way to go, Mayor. Oh, that's Thank pretty you. too. No. It's, it's a little... Okay, it's, I see. You can see. Yeah. It's pretty too. A little goes a long uh -huh. way though with that. Makes it a... a Hint more brown, maybe, but yeah. it's still nice. There's no, no wrong. So you can see I pop that in here, and then I'm going to still grab more of that maroon color, and I'm just going to add just a couple little wispy lines here in there, just around, and maybe one here. And that did dry some, so that's good. Now I can add some of my other layers. On this one, I want to add some. So you can see since this dried a little, now my yellow is laying on top of this orange instead of blending in. I want this to pop. Oh, yeah. Yours looks wonderful so you see? there. Look at that. Yeah, look but it at needed it. to dry a little. I think that's, yeah, I need to... I need a little, mine came a little heavy. I need to dry a little bit. As it dries, it will lay on top. On. They look beautiful. And then, so what, typically what you, what you do is you add your darker colors, your mid-tones, your lighter, your highlights and light, those, which is the, I love doing the highlights. That's the best part, right? Yeah. That's at the end. So okay. as it's drying, you'll come in and just see where it needs a little, needs a little pop, come little forward. Pop. Yeah. So if you're starting with the dark red, you can use the pink for a highlight. You can use the yellow. You can add white to the yellow or to the orange. Um, I'm just using the yellow here. And I'm just going to pop just right here. In the, so next to that darkest area of the center, I want some highlights. And that, do you see that mm. little, just that little stroke of yellow next yes. to that dark? That made that yep. recede a little because that light, our eyes, the cones in our eyes, see that yellow first, and it comes forward. So we're doing mm -hmm. that. Yeah, and then, let's see. Oh, I need some dark. I'm going to do the same thing with white, too. And then you want to, you know, as you're painting, then you look at the whole thing. Something You could even squint your eyes and see if your eye is just going to one particular section, and it's not really moving around. If you want that as the focus, that's fine, but if you want to have a nice composition in your eye to kind of flow around the artwork, if you squint your eye and see if it gets stuck on one spot, then you need to remedy that by maybe adding mm -hmm. some other highlights in another spot or, or some di darker tones just to, to uh, so that it's balanced a little bit. So I'm taking some white with my little brush and I'm coming around like this. Same, same brush stroke. So whichever you have really pretty curves. So, so you use your same brush strokes when you add your highlights. Alan, his is a, a, interesting too. So just whatever brush strokes you're Mine you're using. No, I like it. Yeah, it looks no, good. Great. Just use your same brush strokes. Just add your the highlights as you're kind of coming cool. around. Yep. And they really should all look different. We are all different, and I they guarantee should, mine will. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing. I didn't say it was bad. 
<laughs> it's a good a beautiful thing. thing. Red. And so I mixed a little, another bit of that dark. So we had a very um, a fun project I did with the mayor, Joanna, in the community. That That's was what this in, was reminding me was of. Is that when July? Oh, in the September. Fall. September. We, yeah, we had like a yeah. fall. Oh, really? Fest. That's wow. what these flowers remind me of. It's hanging up in the borough building. Yes. If you want, yeah, so Rick nice. Hopkinson, cool. who he, he had um, talked to me about maybe doing some artwork for the borough building. And I said, well, sure, I can create some artwork. And he had suggested some poppies, something red, something colorful for in the hallway. And I thought, yeah, sure, I can do that. But why not make it a community project? So I painted, was it three canvases? Three big, three big canvases. Yeah, really big. Four foot by five foot. I painted them, drew them like a paint by number. And then we set them up. We blocked off the street. We got colors that you we were used. doing this in the street. Yes, yeah. we blocked off wow. the street. Yeah. We had music and food, and it was great. And then um, I used colors from the logo. They were inspired from the mm -hmm. the Mount Oliver Borough logo, which is really nice. So nice. And we so what I did was everyone that came, anybody that showed up. We had little kids. We had grandmas, all ages in between, and we all painted mm -hmm. these paintings together. And they come out beautifully, and they hang in the borough building. So if you go oh, there, wow. yeah, and I remember your the little kids building. there. I would say, yeah, my your little girl, girl, she, my four-year-old, yeah, they, were they were in there painting, in there. and it was fantastic. So the artwork is created by the community. So it's really that was really special. Yeah. I really appreciate. Thanks really, for sharing that, Joanna. That Maria. was fun. Yeah, they have a lot of good things. We have I live really music. Hope to do more things like that. Where oh, we can definitely. With art, I think. Oh yeah, art, music. Yes. Good things. Good things. So, and we've been doing a lot more events like that. So that's when you know, again, Rick and the borough, they really, yeah, they've been doing a lot of planning. It started as some a few summer events, and it got bigger, and then it turned into lots of summer events, and then it turned into fall events where wow, there's live fun. music a lot. They're seasonal and, here. Yeah, they have mute. They watch movies. They yeah. again, sometimes they. I don't know if the bus drivers love it as much. Well, but we close down Brownsville know, Road. Close <laughs> the street down. Yep, you yep, know, you that's go the other main, way. Main Street. We, we it do. Is. We do know. <laughs> they, they just go around. Right on it. So. They just, oh, did you? Oh, yeah. They, well, they just go around the block. Hand. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's usually just a small part, but yeah, we have a, a newer parking lot area where so sometimes we utilize that instead mm -hmm. of closing off the street. Well, there are side streets you can circle. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you know them. It, yeah. The and they bus have, drivers. They do. have live music too on the deck. It's yeah, just, but it's wonderful. a little bigger vehicle than those cars. <laughs> <laughs> they <laughs> are. <laughs> Friends of mine are Port Authority drivers, so uh -oh. they've told me that. Yeah. <laughs> and they try not to run over people. There you go. They do a good job of not doing it. <laughs> well, I'll have to share with you. I worked in downtown Pittsburgh since I was 15 years oh, old. Oh, wow. And I learned how to jaywalk with Vic Sienko directing traffic. The oh, yeah. Like he was great. I actually met him and just a legendary guy, and he go, come on, kid, make it quick. Aww. <laughs> he was fun. Okay, so I'm coming. I have my flowers. I think they're, they still need to dry a little bit. I'll add some little, tweak it a little bit with some highlights and shadows. But I'm coming in to uh, paint my leaves. And you guys are okay. doing good, so just keep doing what you're doing. They look, they look good. Maybe, can we just take a second and grab your canvases and just show just the progress? They're so cool. Look how interesting already. I'm so far behind. No, they look great. You see? <laughs> They look different already. I like it. Everybody has their own their own style. Thank you, teacher. They look good. All right, that's good. All right, so I'm coming in with the same <laughs> half inch. The entertainment. That good. grunting noise yeah, that you heard was Jono. He's hiding on the other side. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> that's some of Jono's artwork behind us. Um, all right, so I have my half inch flat shader. And I'm coming in, I'm just using this, Usually when I paint leaves, I don't necessarily use the, the green, kind of just straight green out of the bottle or tube. I like to mix some earthier tones with it, or I'll double load or triple load my brush. But for in this case, because of the, the colors that we're using, the color palette, I want this strong, bright green, just yeah. the way it is. So I'm going to take some green. I am going to introduce some other colors on the leaves too. I have like three or four or five different colors on my leaves, but I am going to start with this green. You can see I'm loading my brush, flipping it back and forth, and I'm coming in and I'm just going to paint, paint my leaves like this. 
and then I'm just blocking them in. You can, if you choose to, you can you can paint uh, maybe the the direction that the veins of the leaves would be. You don't have to, but it does kind of nice build up a nice texture. Well, the theme has been direction, so yeah. I'm trying to follow that. And that's anytime you're you're painting something, if it's fur or feathers or something, you know, you keep in mind the direction that it it is on your subject matter and you paint so that the, the texture of the paint helps to achieve a certain look. Now this this leaf, I, I just kind of pulled my brush oh, yeah. like this on an angle and let it create okay. like that little serrated edges, you yeah. know, if you wanted to do that. And then you check that out. Wow. Yeah. Nice little texture. Just that yeah. is awesome. Thanks. Okay, okay. Thanks. I'm gonna attempt it. But I'm gonna attempt it. Way. <laughs> I'm gonna attempt it. <laughs> I'll show you. Just I'll show you with the brush stroke again. Okay. And um, so we just kind of went like this. We just I laid the brush sort of like a little Where's bit of an ten angle. Where's that video right now for me? Exactly. To just kind of do something like that. And now I'm going again because I'm painting wet on wet in this with this type of painting. I'm I went into this aqua color, the same one that's in our background, and I'm just laying some brush strokes on top. And it's mixing in with the green, but it's giving giving us some dimension on the leaves. And then I'll come in with the smaller detail brush too. And then I'm going to even take a little bit of yellow. And I'm mixing that with the green. And it's making a real bright, limey green. And I'm going to hit oh, yeah, that. Like that. And you can see, again, I started with the darker color. When you introduce that lighter color, how it brings it forward yeah. a little bit. And we also have our light source, right, Alan? Is on yes. our right side. <laughs> yes. Yes. I am aware. Where's the light source? <laughs> and um, <laughs> so there, you know, have a couple leaves go in there. I'll do the veining and some of these other the contour lines with my smaller brush. But while I have this same brush, I just rinsed it. Um, as the paint kind of builds up in your brush, sometimes the, the the bristles will come apart. Just rinse it and get that excess paint out of there. Mine and are then, staying together pretty yeah. good, thanks to you. Yeah, and then that way, it, your bristles will come together nicely again. It can be taught. That's right. So what I'm doing is I'm loading my brush with the green again, and the stems we're doing freehand, okay? Oh. So I'm going to... Oh, that's right. Yes, mm -hmm. we're, we're loading this blush, brush, the, the same, same one. We're holding it vertically because we don't want that stem to be a big line. I mean, okay. you can if you want to. You want to be a big, chunky stem, that's fine. But I, I might. Would, you might. <laughs> you never know with him. But we're going to hold the brush this way and use the chiseled edge to make that line. So I I'm like going that to. Chiseled edge. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just going to do Joanna like a little. For pointing that out. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good. Yeah. So I'm just doing like like a little V shape right here, kind of where that the stem would flare out and to grab the, that blossom. Just did that little bit there, and then I'm just going to hold my brush vertically and pull it down like that. Ooh. Now that got a little chunkier than I wanted it to be, so I might go back in with the aqua and make that a little narrower looking off the sea. This one, there's a little, there's one here, because that's the stem that holds this one. Then this one, I'm coming here. I feel like it's getting a little bit too wide, so I'm going to take some of that extra paint off. I'm just amazed how that green makes it look so brown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to curve this one down a little. This one's up here. And bring this one here. And you can add stems anywhere you'd like. This one, I was just trying to balance a little. You can see I made these certainly thinner. So that one up there, uh, I'll see. I may, I may adjust that one. How do I make the yellow sort of brownish? What's the opposite on the color wheel I don't of know. the yellow? <laughs> she can put you to work. <laughs> Is it purple? It's purple. So then it'd be yellow, red, and blue. So if you want, you can add a little. You can just add blue, blue and purple are similar. So if you, since you don't have purple, you can make purple first. I would just add a tiny bit of blue. Because I was going to do it in the top level there. Yeah, the, just add. It. Just add a little bit of blue to the yellow, and that'll give you. Okay. We'll try with the, the. See, it depends on the blue that you have. It depends on the yellow that you have. If we take a little bit of yellow, add a I'm little not bit of blue. I'm brush, so I'll see. No, see, it's. It's too green. It's too green. 
Um, you can add a little bit of red and a little bit of blue. So the three primary colors make more of a brown okay. when you mix them. It's just the amounts that however you, how you mix them in. Okay. Um, okay, so I have my stems. I'm letting those dry for a second, and I'm coming in with my little brown liner brush. And I'm going to add some of the veins in the leaves. So I'm coming in with the white. I'm just going to add a little here and there, a couple little brush strokes. And whenever you want to keep that point on your brush, you just twirl the brush as you're loading. There's still some green in there. Just pull it and twist it in your hand, and that keeps that point on the brush. So I just want just a couple little, not, not everywhere, just a couple little hints right there. And then I'll see if I needed to add, I might want to add just a little white here and there, wherever I need something to kind of pop a little. And on the design, um, no, I, I take that back. We're going to work with our, our blue after. So I'm going to paint my berries. Now this is the half inch uh, filbert. It, it's a, a shader or a filbert. It has that curved top. Okay. And anytime mm -hmm. you're painting something that has a round, like we could use this for the, the flowers as well. Um, we just chose to use the other one, but this would work too. But we're going to use this to paint our berries. And these berries, I'm not sure what kind they are. This is more of a stylized bouquet, the okay. berries. They're green. I just wanted them to still be green just because of the composition, you know. You're I don't doing know. Doing that freehand they're, they're will be just, an adventure. No, you'll be good because it's all in the brush. So I'm loading my brush with the, the green. And I'm just going to, so I'm going to first do a little dot where I think I want them to be. Because I want them on either side. We have them on either side of the stem, and then we'll connect them with a little. So I'm going to say, I want this one to overlap. So there's going to be one here, one here. So I have, say that's going to be my berries here. So I'm taking my brush, and I'm going to put a generous amount of paint on the brush. And if I just lay the brush down like this, not the whole, not necessarily pulling it, but just laying that tip and pushing a little bit. You see it gave me a hmm. yeah. little, like little, it doesn't have to be perfectly round because we're going to come up with our little detail brush and we can do like a little, like oh, trim it. I'm going to practice that on my plate yeah. first. Yeah, like you could do that. Like I'm going to give it a now, little practice. If you're not afraid of the paint, you can also do this. Uh -uh. You can put your oh. finger in. And you can do that, and you can make a I nice have little. I memories of finger painting. So you can. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's acrylics. It washes off. So. And thanks for the apron. Oh, absolutely. So you can see now if I push. If I push down too far and it's not as round, then I just do, two. I'll do one brush stroke this way and one this way. So you can do it in two parts. You could even flip and turn oh, the brush. Okay. And I don't want them to be like. They don't have to be. Perfectly round, you know. There's something in I'll nature. I'll try to make them smaller than my apples that I made. Yeah, <laughs> in the the red barn, we yes. did. Yeah, you did a good job Aww. though. You did oh, really good. You. Thank you. Well, we were laughing because the apples, in you know, in comparison <laughs> to the trees, if the, it was in real life, the apples were like volleyball size. <laughs> I like my apples. Yeah, <laughs> they were good. Okay, and let's see. I have one, two, three, four, five here. There's always a horn growing up here, this intersection. My, what size brush again did you use for the stems? Not the big one. The I used the this flat right shader, here. and then you hold it on its chiseled edge. This Hold it vertically to get, and you can even practice that on your plate, too, if you I, like. That's a great idea. Yeah. I am going to practice that. <laughs> and I have, I have more plates if you need one. Yeah, don't you want, turn a, it you over. want a clean one? Mess up you good? Uh, yeah, I might take another one. Okay. I, mean, I might still come back to this one, but I. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Oh yeah, I'm getting a little wide. I see. Okay. Woo. So, you just don't don't press. Yeah. Just kind of lightly put that chiseled edge. Just and you can okay. use the the little round brush too. But it's just nice. Yeah. It's a nice. And, and it's usually easier if you do it faster. You kind of get an idea of where it's going to go, and just gotta do a big brush stroke. Okay. If you I'm if you do it too slow, part. it's going to be too jaggy looking. And 
So you just okay. whoosh, you just got to like hold your breath maybe and you just yeah. go for it. That's okay. that's the best way to I'm do about it. To go for it. <laughs> that's it. That's all you got to do. And then I'm going to connect. Oh yeah, it's a little little wide. See. Little and that's wide. okay. Mine did the same thing. So now you know. Just don't press. Put enough. Mm -hmm. I'm beyond. Like put enough paint on the brush, but then don't <laughs> press it as hard. <laughs> And I'm connecting here, uh, the little stems. And then I'm going to, while that's still wet, I'm going into the blue. Now my blue looks like it has a little, it's starting to dry on top. I have to add a little bit of water. You can also oh. keep a spray bottle when you're painting with acrylics, especially if you're painting in the summertime. Jono, Jono. <laughs> yeah. Yes, spray, bo oh, spray bottle. Wrong deer. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. You we got to have a little fun here. Sand from the river yeah, there you go. Bring it. <laughs> I have it. Now, what I'm doing here with my little round brush is I'm, I'm just putting a little contour line, just a little suggestion. Again, these are more of a stylized flower, um, not necessarily something that you would see in nature. I don't know. We're having taking artistic license here, and I'm putting this little pop of blue, like little C shapes. I'm drawing like a little, hmm. just just to accent them a little bit. And on there. And then I'm going to do the same thing on my leaves. I just, and then around my flowers. Just because I like the color, this blue with this composition and the, this color palette. And I just wanted to introduce this blue. So I'm just coming in so we can, this can act as a bit of a color like a shadow so you wow. can see here I'm adding that little bit of blue there just here and there again just some little accents so anyway that's just I just add that little pop there and I need so and then I have my little I'm good cleaning this brush. Practice. yeah practice makes so perfect <laughs> you can do it so I'm putting some little white highlights yeah, um, on the berry so I'm taking that same little round brush and I'm just putting a generous amount on the brush and just dot, just like a little suggestion of a highlight. I don't like that one. Okay, little here. And then I'll kind of assess the situation here and see do I need any white highlights while I have my, maybe put a little white here and I think I'm going to put a little bit of yellow in there, and and then I'm just looking at the overall painting and see where I might need a little highlight or shadow. Um, that stem kind of does bother me up here. It's a little too too, too wide. wide. So I'm taking the background color, and I'm just going over part of that stem, just like that, so you can see. I mean, yeah. and not every stem's going, it doesn't have to be the same size, right? No, but, but it's, you know. Mine aren't. Two of mine are a little <laughs> wide. I think they I'm look good. You guys did really mine good. Mine look like 79 right now, so. 79. <laughs> 79. Route 79. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and don't forget, you need one of your, uh, that, that dark center in your big flower I up there, that. too. Yeah. yeah. I got distracted with all the other effluvia there. <laughs> so, I'm just looking now, I'm, I'm looking, I feel like, this area here, I feel like it needs to just pop a little bit more. So I'm going to make, I like that pink you did on your vase. So you must have used more red. I so did. I went a little lighter on some of this. Yeah. Very creative, Joanna. So nice. Thank you. Thank you. I also, I did add in a stem over here because I felt like that flower was flying nice. There's too a much. pop in there. So oh, I, yeah. I mine is too. I go back a little. I, I mean, think, it's fine. It's beautiful. I think on the design there Maybe was the blue touched. that went that way yeah. and they touched, but mine's not touching either. Good I. Good eye. No, I mean, you may your no, good. Like, I'm going to do one I'm on mine too. I added it in. No, it's, it hit me. The it, the creative juice is just they the are stroke in the <laughs> struck in the moment, and I uh, had to. Well, you see, you inspired me. I added one on mine too because mine Whoa. was mine was just flopping around out there too. There, okay. So, yeah, I feel like it needs. I I did use when I did this. I actually created this in a computer just to, but I had oh. this brighter pink, but we don't have the bright pink here, so um, that would have been pretty. Um, yeah, I don't have it, so I'm going to use red, more of the white, 
Yeah, you must yeah, have really I didn't give my leaves much. I need to get a little <laughs> color. Yeah, they need a little oomph, they little some little, veining. They got a little wet, and I thought I'd let them dry, and then I forgot about they them. They look great, though. <laughs> so you could use the little uh, round liner brush to do mm -hmm. some of the veining, and, and the little, I added some of the, um, yep, that works. Okay. And if it's, see if it's stiff, it might be some of that, there you go. And just add, you can use... Um, the, the aqua color I use, the lime color, white, just to give them a little interest. And then you can also use that color to trim the berries, too, if you'd like. You don't have to use the blue. We could use a bright green or um, it's your painting. So, yeah, I feel like mine, I feel like that needs just to pop a little bit here and there. And you could see now I'm I'm going in different areas than I was before, and that brings those forward, some of those lines. And then I feel like my red needs to just be a little more intense. Oh yeah, see right there. So so you may have to go back in with the darker. I think just I'm gonna to, have to do a little. Just yeah. to give it a little. Sometimes it gets covered up too much. Mm -hmm. And I think that's it for mine. I don't want to, like, you know, you can look back on the art the next day or something, come back in. You can always add some other layers, but it's, sometimes it's a good idea to not, you know, mess Overdue. around with it too much. <laughs> you got to know when to stop. That's right. Yes. So I'm going to, I'm saying that's it for me. I'm going to... Always sign your artwork or put your initials or something. I'm oh, gonna do yeah. where? You can do this on you can do it on the back too. Okay, I'll do it on the back. Yeah. Mine's real simple, AL. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, oh. So, you know, whatever. Just look at just look at it and see if everything looks balanced. Um, you can kind of keep playing around with it forever, right? You have to know, yes. know when to stop, but just for, I'm just looking at my little highlights of the last thing I'm doing here. Just a couple. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, I'm finished. I believe Mayor Joanne is done. And Alan, let's see how I'm they done. look. They look great. You guys did a very nice job. Thank you so much. I you know. were a great teacher. Yeah, I know. It feels Thanks. like art class again. Like, oh, are we going to hang yeah. out in the hallway? Yeah. Are we gonna, you know? Can yeah. we? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's see, you just hang this your little. going up, yeah. Find your clip, clip. You hang it you up. You ladies are outstanding with what you did. Yours is fantastic. Oh, I love you. seeing all the differences in them. It's mm -hmm. really cool. I'll nice, say it again. <laughs> very nice. Great job. And then, so next episode, we're going to paint. This is a view from the West End. Overlook. A little si suggestion of the city in there. A little more um, abstract too, but. Of our that tree, that really wonderful I tree love that's that out there. View. I yeah. love that view. This that is, is a sunrise, great. a lot of sunrise in the city from that view. We'll so know that, where the light's coming yes. from. Yes. Yeah. But you have to check back to see who the special guest is. So we will have one. So we like that's the it. We like to tease with it. Thank you for watching. Yes. We appreciate you watching us everywhere on Facebook, YouTube. Yes. And wait till the next show. We're going to have some more fun. My third picture and painting. I'm so proud of it. Thank you very much. Thank you.